The La Costa Hotel and Spa in Carlsbad, California, is the home of greatest sports legends. Every year, 10 of the world's finest athletes come here to be honored as sports legends. In all, 130 superstars have appeared. Today, legends host Jane Kennedy meets with a baseball pitcher who was once the ace of the San Francisco Giants. He became a hero in his native land, the Dominican Republic. His name, Juan Marichal. Marichal, the Dominican Dandy. Juan Marichal's style was unique. He is perhaps best known for his high kicking delivery and his ability to throw many types of pitches. Juan Marichal won 20 games six times and compiled a total of 243 victories. He was rewarded for his many pitching achievements by being inducted into Baseball's Hall of Fame in 1983. It's a long way from a small Caribbean village to Cooperstown, New York. The journey was filled with tremendous excitement and achievement, but there was controversy as well. Juan relived his extraordinary career with sports legends host Jane Kennedy. Jane asked Juan how it all began. Juan, when you were growing up in the Dominican Republic, what was life like for you? Well, when I was a kid, I, I always dreamed about becoming a baseball player someday. Always? Always. At the age of 20, you were signed by the Giants. What was your impression of the United States when you first came here? I want to go back home. And that happened to, to many players then. Today is easy, you know. They, they came over here, they play with so many different Latin players from all over Latin America. But mm -hmm. at that time, it was hard. You, sometimes you have one single guy in the team, and it was very hard to communicate with the, with the uh, the other players because they don't know how to speak, speak Spanish and I, uh, I don't know how to speak English and it was very hard for me to to communicate. 22-year-old Juan Marichal joins the Giants in 1960 after spending only two years in the minors. He gains immediate attention with that unusual high kick delivery. The Giants are a promising team, boasting perhaps the finest all-around player in baseball, Willie Mays. Juan's first start as a Giant is spectacular. He hurls a one-hitter and shuts out the Phillies 1-0. Marichal goes on to win 13 games in 1961 and comes back with 18 victories in 1962. As always, baseball people are intrigued with his delivery. Juan explains how he developed his style from minor league coach Andy Gibb. One day, I was pitching real good, and he came to me and said, listen, why you pitch that way? Why you throw side arm all the time? And, you know, it really surprised me, because I was pitching good. So I said, what happened? You're not happy with the way I pitch? He said, no. I think you can, if you learn how to throw open hands, you'll be more effective against right, uh, left-handed hitters. So he asked me if I was willing to, to learn how to throw over here. I said, yes, I, I think I want to take a chance. So he took me to the sideline. He got me throwing in the bullpen. I started throwing overhand. Then I started kicking my leg at the same time. I feel like I was throwing harder with the same control. And I fall in love with the style. And, and that's how the, my high kick came, you know, from, from trying to throw overhand. 
Juan's pitching style is so baffling to hitters because they have never seen anything quite like it before. He throws five pitches with equal mastery. Fastball, curveball, slider, changeup, and screwball. He throws overhand, sidearm, and three-quarters sidearm. And all of this is compounded by the high kick, which often prevents hitters from seeing the ball until it's too late. Already the ace of the Giants pitching staff, Juan emerges as a league superstar in 1963. His greatest highlight of the season is a no-hitter he pitches against Houston on June 15th. Marischal faces only 29 batters and wins 1-0. Marischal finishes the season with 25 wins and is now considered a member of the baseball elite. When I won that 25 games, I really established myself in the major league. And uh, every person in Dominican, you know, look at me like a, like a hero. One of baseball's fiercest rivalries was between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Giants. When they both moved out west in the late 50s, the rivalry continued. For Juan Marichal, the Giants pitching ace, a game against the Dodgers was always something special. Whenever Juan Marichal takes the field against the Dodgers, he experiences that extra energy that only adrenaline can create. During his career, Marichal has great success against the Dodgers, winning twice as many games as he loses. Every game is important, not just for pride, but because the Giants and Dodgers battled for the pennant during much of the 60s. But the rivalry doesn't begin in the 1960s. Its roots are planted in a different era, at a different place, New York City. Over the years, the Giant-Dodger rivalry has many magical moments. Who can forget Bobby Thompson's pennant-winning home run? For Juan Marichal, the Giants' ace pitcher, the rivalry has an added dimension. Juan is often compared with the Dodgers' ace, Sandy Koufax. Some call Sandy the greatest pitcher ever. Koufax wins three Cy Young Awards and leads the Dodgers to two world titles. Naturally, Koufax receives most of the media attention. Indeed, Juan Marichal has no trouble getting up for the Dodgers. Did you really, really dislike the Dodgers? I don't think so. Maybe in the field. Maybe in the field. But uh, outside the stadium, we was all friends. And uh, we used to go together and have dinner together. And I would have fun. But uh, in the field, you know, that was, that was different. In 1965, um, in one particular game in late August, you found yourself pitching against Mr. Koufax, and uh, quite an incident occurred. Would yes. you like to talk about that? Sure. Well, that was something that, you know, I really regret. I think that's the only thing that happened in my life that I, I wish I can uh, banish that from my career. On August 22, 1965, Juan Marichal becomes involved in a fight with Dodger catcher John Roseboro. During the fight, Juan hits Roseboro with his bat. Marichal claims that while batting, Roseboro intentionally nicked him on the ear when throwing the ball back to the pitcher. I asked him if he was doing that on purpose, and he gave me a very, very <laughs> uh, dirty answer, you know, and... Uh, the second time I asked him, I stayed there, and he started charging me. And there's when that I, I let the bat go. I never, you know, I never tried to hurt him. You know, I I just tried to stop him because uh, he got all the protection on himself, and uh, the only thing I got on my hands was the bat. And I I was so sorry later that I I used it, you know, because I think it was bad. And uh, like I say, I regret what happened to me that day. It's the only thing I regret in baseball and, and even in, in my life. 
after that incident and also going into the 66 season did you find it difficult to gain your confidence no it wasn't that easy you know when when something like that happened it's very hard to convince the people that you was right or I was at that time I was a bad guy because I used a bat something that I, I I was wrong you know but inside of me I I knew that I that I was provoked so I was trying to forget the whole things and I was trying to hope that the people forget what happened Marichal experiences heavy criticism when he returns to the mound. The Roseboro fight changes his life dramatically. But Juan finally settles down the next year and has one of his best seasons ever. The fans forgive this essentially peaceful man and once again applaud Marichal's pitching achievements. Juan is named to the All-Star team at midseason. Marichal has always performed well in all-star games, and this year is no exception. He pitches three scoreless innings. Swing and a miss, he struck him out. Marichal winds up. He delivers. Strike three, call. Juan is a consistent winner the rest of the season as his giant teammates give him 100%. Showing no effects from the adversity of a year ago, Marichal finishes the season by notching his 25th victory. Juan Marichal is at the peak of his pitching career. There is no doubt that Juan Marichal is one of the top pitchers of his era. There are only a few others whose standards compare with Juan's. Of course, there is Sandy Koufax. Koufax pitches four no-hitters, including a perfect game. Sandy wins three Cy Young awards and has the league's lowest earned run average five years in a row. Then there is Don Drysdale, another Cy Young winner. Drysdale uses his six foot five inch frame to overpower batters. His achievement of pitching 58 and two-thirds consecutive innings of scoreless ball is still a major league record. Bob Gibson, a World Series hero for the Cardinals, Gibson wins the Cy Young Award twice. He is the National League MVP in 1968 with an all-time record low ERA of 1.12. Then there is Juan Marichal, his career stats compare favorably with anyone. From 1962 through 1967, no one, not Koufax, not Drysdale, not Gibson, wins more games than Juan. How do you rank yourself among the top pitchers of your era? Well, at that time, I remember, talk about salary-wise, you know, Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale was the top pay pictures and I was making I think maybe the same type of money they was making so I have to consider myself in the best five because Gibson was there you know and uh, Drysdale, Koufax and uh, uh, Jim Palmer in the American League, Tom Silver that come up after that and you know they was top pitchers and I think I was in that group. In 1968, Marichal has his most productive season. He wins 26 games while leading the league in complete games and innings pitched. As he has done throughout his career, Juan finishes over half the games he starts. In 1969, Juan wins 21 games and leads the league in ERA. It is the sixth time Juan has won 20 or more games. In just 10 seasons, Marichal has compiled 191 wins. So what do you credit your durability and consistency? Well, I was, uh, when I was growing up, you know, in my country, I used to walk a lot. I, I used to walk eight kilometers every day just to go to school. So. I guess that's one of the reasons that 
I have strong legs. And uh, to be a, a pitcher, uh, you know, you have to have a strong leg. I think if you don't have a strong leg, you can throw the ball harder, or you can throw the ball for nine innings. Uh, today, I wish I could have had those ace relievers that they have today. You only have to prepare yourself for five or six innings. But those years, you have to be ready for nine because you don't have that many good relievers behind you. Going into the 1970 season, you were only nine games from winning 200. How did you feel about that? And did you find yourself really trying to make 200 or just playing a, a game at a time? I went to the field thinking about any regular game, you know. It was another game that I had to pitch and I had to try to win. On August 28, 1970, Juan Marichal goes for his 200th win at Candlestick Park. His opponent, the Pittsburgh Pirates. As with all the great ones, Marichal rises to the occasion. Marichal in the windup. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to shortstop. Linear scoops over to first. He throws cash out. Meanwhile, the Giants give Juan plenty of offense. Deet sends a grounder towards second, and it goes on through. Fuentes rounds third. He'll score, and the Giants lead it one to nothing. Ahead late of the game, the Giants dig in on defense. Ground ball to Fuentes, over to second for one. The relay to first, double play. Leading five to one in the ninth, Marichal is near his goal. Here's the windup and the pitch. Swing it, a miss, strike two. Marichal just one out away from win number 200. Here's the pitch. Strike three, call. He did it. Juan Marichal has won his 200th game. After the game, I I have a, a picture with a, with a baseball with, with a 200 on it, and uh, I got a beautiful ring for winning the 200 games, and that was a beautiful thing to happen. Juan Marichal pitched in the major leagues for 16 years, in which he won 243 games. Although he never won a World Series ring, his consistency on the mound earned him an even greater reward, a trip to baseball's Hall of Fame. On July 31, 1983, Juan Marichal's baseball legend takes up permanent residency in Cooperstown. The honor, which is best always, for me today, I accept on behalf of my family, my country, Repu Dominican Republic, and all the people who assisted me in making my baseball career a reality. Very special thanks to the San Francisco Giants, my teammates, and the fans for whom I had the pleasure to play for 13 years. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to join the baseball greats who are enshrined in Baseball Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be here today, and thank you very much. I think that was one of the greatest days in my life. And uh, not only for myself, but for my country and for my people. Well, your success has certainly been uh, a credit to you. And uh, it's amazing when you see somebody that has a dream and you see it fulfilled. And so many times you see that on Greatest Sports Legends. And I just uh, would like to thank you for the time that you spent with us. And thank you for coming to La Costa. And I wish you all the best and congratulations on your induction. Thank you very much. And it was my pleasure doing this with a beautiful person like you are. Oh, thank you. And uh, <laughs> it's my pleasure.